fat, fructose, and calories. Five nutrition facts we used to believe. Listen up. One of my patients were trying to lose weight and wanted to know if her methods were sound good. Well, she claims to count every calorie. She avoids nuts due to their high fat content and only snack on sugary but fat-free foods. Was she on the right track? Well, if that conversation had taken place in 1990, she would have been praised for her nutrition knowledge. However, those pearls of wisdom are way out of date. Nutritional and medical science evolves quickly and knowledge gained from a 25-year-old nutrition textbook must be updated. Number one myth, all fat is bad. Well, in 2001, my favorite breakfast was a huge New York style bagel with nothing on it because we all believed that fat makes you fat. Well, we avoided butter, cream cheese, and peanut butter, they don't really. Because fat-free foods were deemed healthier and nuts, seeds, and avocado were discouraged. So a low fat, high carbohydrate diet was recommended for weight loss and cardiovascular health. You remember that? You are doing yourself a disservice if you continue to eat pasta without olive oil or bread without peanut butter. Fat is not something to be afraid of. Now, certain fats, particularly those found in nuts, seeds, olive oil, fish, and avocado, are good for heart health and weight control and can help lower the risk of developing type 2 diabetes. And if you have type 2 diabetes, it will help to control your blood sugars. They should be consumed pretty much on a daily basis. Put on your menu every day. Number two myth is for diabetics, fructose is preferable. According to my nutrition textbook from 2001, fructose does not cause high blood sugar uh, problems in people with diabetes. This is what they said, right? Because fructose found naturally in fruits and stuff it is actually safe in small amounts, don't get me wrong there. However, in 1990s, since fructose was widely used as a sweetener in processed foods because it was perceived to be healthier than the white sugar. Do you remember that? The fruities and stuff, the, the diabetes friendly fructose uh, sweetened cookies and stuff like that. You're not doing that, are you? I'm, I'm glad you're not because you're learning. Excess fructose consumption, mostly in the form of high fructose corn syrup, has been linked to insulin resistance. And pretty much, actually, I think I would say 90% of insulin resistance comes from that. And also type 2 diabetes, right, as a result. So for diabetics, that's not good at all. Excess fructose consumption, even in the form of fruit, right, has been linked to metabolic syndrome, obesity, cardiovascular disease. Sometimes my patients will say, oh yeah, I eat like a big bowl of fruit like five times a day. No, that's not necessarily good for you. So again, a little bit of a fruit is fine, but too much fructose, especially in the form of sweetener. Anything that comes in a can, in a prepackaged sweetened food, you should stay away from. Another thing about the calories, right? So they used to say it doesn't matter if you eat 300 calories from apples or chocolate, a calorie is a calorie. Well, in the mid 90s and early 2000s, uh, my times, uh, right? Um, uh, they were all treated the same way, regardless of the source. So that was a case of dietary tunnel vision. We now understand that the calories in, for example, soda, candy, and other treats provide sugar, but no vitamins, no minerals, no fiber, no protein, no nothing. That is not the case with calories from vegetables, legumes, or fish, which contain nutrients in every bite, right? So if you still count calories, but don't think about nothing else, I would say consider meeting with our dietitian at sugarmds.com to learn why nutrient-dense foods are a better choice and make a plan for yourself. Number four myth is sugar only contributes to tooth decay. Well, my dorm room was full of Snackwell's cookies, gummy bears, and Snapple, and all of my fat-free and guilt-free pleasures, right? Well, these fat-free foods are high in sugar, my friend. They didn't seem to be an issue because I had been taught that sugar causes, you know, dental cavities, but otherwise it's pretty much harmless. It just burned off, right? Well, I brush twice a day, so what's the harm? 
in 2017, not too long ago, a new story begins to emerge. Again, excess sugar consumption, particularly from sweetened beverages, actually has been linked to increased risk of obesity, type 2 diabetes, dementia, heart disease. Again, these are keep the studies are keep coming still. Sugar is not as blameless as we once thought and should be consumed at best in moderation. The American Heart Association recommends that women consume no more than six teaspoons of added sugar per day, and I recommend is not more than two, okay? And men consume no more than nine teaspoons, and I would say go down to three additional sugar if you have to have sugar in your diet. If you don't have to, great. Number five, again, this is another myth. Calories in, calories out. Weight loss was explained by simply, you know, you will lose weight by eating fewer calories. And if you exercise more, you're gonna burn more calories and, and da, da 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 and then that's it, right? Well, just simply eat less and exercise more. Well, to an extent it is true, but obesity has been blamed on laziness and overindulgence, which is just slightly true, but obesity is more complicated than that, as we now understand. Now, the genetics, physiology, the activity level, your environment, your diet, your socioeconomic status all play a role. Also, researchers are studying how obesity is related to hormones like leptin, like ghrelin, which were not even mentioned in early 2000 textbooks. Since 2017, we intend to treat obesity as a disease rather than blaming those who suffer from it. And we are still not sure how to solve the weight control conundrum. In fact, because nutrition is a relatively new science, we don't have many answers. So what I'm saying could be different 10 years from now. But the research evolves as humans do, and today's theory may be totally obsolete tomorrow. It will be interesting to watch this video again in 25 years to see how far we have come. And I believe we are in the right direction. Thank you for watching, guys. I hope this helped you understand why sugar and fructose is so bad for you and why fats are not necessarily bad for you. We will see you in the next video. Thank you for watching.